Welcome back to another episode of Game Development Beyond the Basics. I'm Eric Freeman, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to add a stop motion effect on any animation in Unity. There are countless uses for this effect, but some good places to start are using on characters to give them motion similar to the Spider-Verse movies as seen in the Miles Morales video game. Or you can apply it to objects in the scene if you're looking to reproduce a classic 90s point and click adventure vibe. For this video, I'm going to use a tune character I threw together in Character Creator 4, but feel free to use any rigged mesh you want. There are no restrictions requiring it to be a humanoid or generic rig or anything like that. This effect is a single script that essentially works by pausing and unpausing the animator component. So as long as you have a skin mesh and an animator component, this will work. I'm going to start by uploading my character to Mixamo, just to get a good animation to test with. I'm going to go with this hit to head animation because it has a good amount of dynamic movement to show off the effect. Plus, it has root motion since the character moves forward during the animation. I'm going to make sure to select FBX for Unity and set it to skin only so only the animation data gets exported. I don't need to bundle the character mesh with the animation since I exported that already from CC4 and I don't want to bloat the file size of my Mixamo animations. In Unity, I'm going to add the Mixamo animation to my project, set it to use the humanoid rig, and point at my Toon character's avatar. Then, in the animation tab, I'll set the root motion properties to all be original, bake the rotation and Y position, and set the animation to looping. Now I'll set up a quick animator controller that just has one state for the hit to head animation. Playing the game, we can see the character will repeatedly fall forward like expected. Before moving on, I'm going to quickly set the character to be the third person camera target just so the game view follows him along. Now this is where the fun begins. Let's create a new script called fake stop motion which I'll apply to the character. In Visual Studio, let's create a property for the animator and an int for the frames per second we want our animation to play back. I'll add an onValidate method, which you can use to automatically populate references for you. In Update, we start by setting the animator speed to zero, which essentially freezes the animation playback. Let's add another variable to keep track of how much time has passed, which will increment with time.delta time every frame. Then let's create another variable called update time, which we set to one divided by FPS. This variable is how long the animator should stay on a pose before animating to the next frame. For example, if we want our animations to play back at eight FPS, that means every frame would be displayed for 0.125 seconds. Now we just check that if time is greater than update time, and if so, subtract update time from time and then set animator.speed to update time divided by time.delta time. The math might be a little confusing here, but what we're doing is keeping the animator paused, then every 0.125 seconds, we play back the animator really fast for a single frame, which, since it's over just a single frame, will look to the player as if it jumped to the next pose in the animation. And then next update loop, the speed gets set back to zero and needs to wait another 0.125 seconds before it can animate again. Back in Unity, we can play the game and see that it already mostly works. The character's animation plays back frame by frame at our desired interval, and we can adjust the FPS while the game is running. While this looks fine for stationary objects, we can see that it won't work well for a moving character because the movement itself is also choppy, which causes the camera to stutter while tracking the character. Fortunately, this is a fairly easy thing to fix as well. To do this, let's create a new vector 3 called velocity and a bool called grab velocity. Then, in our update method, we set grab velocity to true when we adjust the animator speed. Then at the start of the method, before we zero out the animator speed, let's create a new if statement that checks if grab velocity is set to true. If so, set grab velocity back to false, and then set velocity to animator.velocity divided by animator.speed. I'm doing this at the start of the method so it runs the next frame while the animator is catching up. I found trying to grab the velocity the same frame returned zero. I'm also dividing the animator.velocity by the animator.speed because I want how fast the character is moving in meters per second. But since the animator.speed is getting adjusted for the catch up frame, it's returning a velocity way higher based on that catch up speed, not on normal playback speed. We're not done yet. But to show off what we have right now, we can see the velocity parameter is getting set to the world space velocity of this character, and you can see it get adjusted correctly 
if I rotate the character around. Now this next part is going to need one more script because we'll be using the on animator move function which overrides the animator's apply root motion checkbox and I don't want to do this in the stop motion effect base class since it shouldn't be opinionated about how the stop motion effect is getting implemented. You also might be implementing this slightly differently depending on your specific implementation. I'm going to create a new script called stop motion smooth movement. Since I want to handle the root motion movement myself, I'm going to add the on animator move method. Once added, you can see it removes the apply root motion checkbox and now just says handled by script. Let's add a reference to the fake stop motion component and add an on validate method to grab it. Now in on animator move, let's just set the transform dot position plus equal to the fake stop motions velocity multiplied by time dot delta time. And that's it. If you're using Unity's character controller, you can use the cc.move method or handle it however you like for your specific use case. Different third party character controllers in the asset store will handle movement separately, so it's down to the specific assets implementation details down here. Running the game now, we can see the character moves smoothly forward and the camera tracks him without skips. Just for fun, I threw a simple third person character controller on him and it looks great. He can move and jump around smoothly, but the animations themselves play back at a stylized interval. I hope this effect can help your game stand out visually in the crowded indie game market we have today. I originally wrote this script with PSX horror games in mind, so let me know if you make something cool with it. Also, I'm not going to cover it in this video, but here's some sample code for how to get a similar effect using Unity's particle system. With all that said, if you're a returning viewer, thanks for sticking around. And if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, then now's a great time to start. My channel just hit its one year anniversary and 30,000 total views, which is absolutely crazy to me. And sorry for the delay between my last video. I was busy getting married. Fun fact, I actually met my wife when I flew out to Boston for Unity's Unite 2015 conference. Anyway, that's all for me. Once again, I'm Eric Freeman, and this has been Game Development Beyond the Basics.